for joining us here on Tribal Topics. I'm Darren Brown. And joining us today is Dr. Henrietta Mann. Uh, Dr. Mann, you're the president of the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribal College uh, in Weatherford on the campus of Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, now, how, tell me how long the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribal College, over, it's, it's CATC, you, you refer to it as CATS, right? That's correct. That's, uh, that's much easier to say. It's not as drawn out. <laughs> tell me uh, how, how long CATS has been around. Actually, the idea of a tribal college came into existence in 2003 with the passage of a resolution duly approved by the tribal council specifically calling for the creation and establishment of a tribal college. Now in 2003, you weren't here. You were no. still in Montana, am I right? That's right. I was doing your teaching thing. Uh, not retiring <laughs> supposedly <laughs> from <laughs> higher education. And you got to tell me how they got you here from Montana. Well, a part of the implementation strategy for establishing the tribal college called for the creation of an educational authority, as it was called, and that actually preceded the call for the tribal college. And so that educational authority, which was made up of uh, two Cheyennes, two Arapahoes, and some non-Indian individuals rep representing Southwestern Redlands and the public school sector, uh, were to serve on that particular uh, entity and to incorporate, to develop the bylaws and so forth. I was one of the two Cheyenne Arapaho uh, appointees, Chief Lawrence Hart being the other. Uh, the Arapahoes were Pauline Harjo and Harvey Pratt. Uh, and so we did, as directed, uh, developed our bylaws, applied for nonprofit status through the IRS, and uh, that was quite a while in coming. In the meantime, in 2006, we had our opening ceremonies at the uh, conference center of Southwestern Oklahoma State University, ribbon cutting and all the like, and, and had one student. And so that Nothing really actually got started other than uh, having a couple of, of positions. And finally, we had to have someone that was there full time that was capable and, capable and competent and knew what uh, the politics and the ins and outs of Southwestern. And so we hired uh, the secretary of the dean of the College of Arts and Sciences as our administrative uh, admissions and administrative officer. Uh, she does more than that. She's the financial aid counselor. She's the admissions officer. She's the bursar. She, I mean, she wears many hats. Mm -hmm. That's our Gail Wilcox. Uh, and she actually preceded me. In the meantime, somewhere or another in about 2007, I, I attended a meeting of the education authority and someone made the statement, this is our chair, who doesn't want to serve as an officer? I didn't want to serve, I was in Montana, I held up my hand and so they said, okay, Henry doesn't want to serve. All right, and I thought this is too easy. I didn't say anything and so I wasn't elected an officer and the next thing I know they were asking me to come down to be the interim uh, president or to be the president. It was too easy, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> and I Little said, I can't know. believe this. And uh, I said, no, I can't, I, I, I can't be the president. I have a job. Uh, I have a commitment to Montana State University. And so they said, well, you'd be our interim president anyway. And so I became their interim president and traveled back and forth between Montana and here. And somewhere in that process decided that you can't build a college from Montana, at least a college located here in Oklahoma. Uh, then the uh, members of the Education Authority said, you have to come down and be the president. And again, I said, well, well, 
I might, and I talked to my immediate supervisor, the president of Montana State University, who granted me a leave of absence for one year to come down to assist the tribes in terms of our outreach activities, build their tribal college. That was in January of 2008 that I came <laughs> down. I'm still sitting here. That's a long I, way of absence. It really is, and it continues, and that particular president retired, unknown to me, and <laughs> another one was appointed, and she kept me on as her special assistant. Uh, but now I'm beginning to hear, when are you coming back, Kimmy? No. And so there is that commitment that I continue to have to Montana State University, but the overarching commitment, one of the heart, one, one that believes in the dream of the people when they ask that a tribal college be created. And uh, so I've stayed, I, and I have told Dr. Crozato, well, my job isn't quite finished yet, and uh, I'll come back. Maybe it's getting short, maybe it's time, but I'll let you know. And <laughs> so she has begun to ask for a little bit more of my time this next year, and I owe it to her. I owe it to Montana State University, but I also owe it to the Cheyenne and Arapaho people, my grandparents, all of our ancestors that have walked before us to help them attain their dream of having a higher education institution all their own to teach about about them, their history, their languages, and the like. But more important, I also have a commitment to the children, my grandchildren, and all of those who have yet to come to walk on this earth. I want them to have a place to be able to go to school where they study our languages, the only place in the world that our languages are taught, where they study our history as a people where they learn about our journey from our homelands far to the north through the Black Hills area where the Cheyennes and Arapahoes formulated their historic alliance and how they journeyed together with, through four treaties beginning with the Treaty of Medicine Lodge followed by the Treaty of Fort Wise, the Treaty of the Little Arkansas and finally the last one, the Treaty of Medicine Lodge in 1867 in which we made a commitment to letting the non-Indians, whom we call the Ill, uh, educate our children between the ages of six and 16. And in return for doing that, the United States government agreed to provide a school teacher for every 30 children as well as a school building. And the, according to the treaty, that provision was to be in effect for no longer, no less than 25 years. There was never ever a termination period and so we've continued that educational journey throughout time and beginning with the establishment of tribal colleges just in 1968, beginning with Diné College on the Navajo or, uh, Reservation, now, which has now grown to 38 tribal colleges nationwide. The Cheyenne and Arapaho people can count themselves very proud to have an institution of higher education of their own because there are only uh, 38 tribal colleges nationwide and there are 40, four, excuse me, four tribal colleges within the state of Oklahoma. Uh, that to me is very significant in terms of exercising the sovereign rights of the two nations to have an educational institution of their own. However, I think back in 2003, the people did not know the magnitude of the financial commitment that they made to the establishment of the tribal college. And if I had been involved in that particular uh, vote of the tribal council or even prepared them, I would have stressed the fact that you cannot build a tribal college entirely on the force of your dreams. That they might, if that has resulted in the tribal college, but it's gonna take a huge financial commitment, an investment that uh, uh, is uh, 
it's a very point. difficult to make in terms of competing demands for I mean, what revenue way you look we at have. It's a substantial mm -hmm. commit, uh, financial commitment. Uh, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, for a, a lot of those people who may be watching, uh, like I said, since the, the tribal college is still, it's fairly new. I mean, well, I, I think it it is. it's not a, uh, there may be a lot of people who don't know much about it. I, you know, tell me about, there. Are, you have, uh, right now you're offering four associate's degrees, is that right? We are. And tell me about those. Okay. Um, I. What is significant about the four degrees offered with the Cheyenne Rapo Tribal College, and this is unlike our sister institutions within the state, our degrees have been approved by the regents for the regional universities so that we have very academically rigorous, very well thought out uh, uh, programs of study for each one of them. Uh, we have a degree that in tribal administration and that was formulated thinking that the workforce in the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Indian Health Service, or just in federal government uh, is beginning to reach retirement age, which would leave a lot of uh, uh, such positions open because we're talking about our students being able to find jobs. So we have the tribal administration degree and uh, then the next, another that we have is one that we call children's teachers, which really was formulated again to meet the needs of the Cheyenne and Arapaho people in terms of the federal requirements for Head Start teachers having to have associate level degrees and baccalaureate degrees as well. And so that is our second degree. We have a degree in American Indian Studies, which seems to be a fairly popular degree uh, in terms of our students being prepared to find employment in Indian related agencies or, or in Indian education programs or just having an associate's degree uh, to, uh, to help them find employment in, in other fields. And then the last one we have is in general studies. And of course, I, I think that it is very important for our students to have a very strong background in mainstream type courses. We, um, our, our mission of the Tribal College is to provide a very strong by uh, cultural uh, background for the students that come through the Tribal College. Our, our vision is to provide our students with a very safe place to study about who they are in, within the sanctuary of the Tribal College and to get the kind of support that they need to stay in school. And so we have the, the four degrees thus far based upon our program offerings taught by adjunct faculty primarily and uh, ac uh, the tribal college is staffed by three people. That is all we have. You have two, we have one more than you do. <laughs> and, uh, and so some days I sit in my office and say, I've taken complete leave of my senses. I'm a complete lunatic to think that I can build a college or that three of us can build a tribal college with very minimal funding. And uh, thus far, the Cheyenne and Arapaho people have been very good about seeing that the tribal college has, has minimal funding to keep going. Um, we're faced in a in a vicious cycle. Uh, we rely solely upon the tribes for our funding and we have to rely upon them because we do not have accreditation yet. We do partner with o Southwestern Oklahoma State University and use their uh, accreditation for our courses so that our courses transfer uh, in, um, any place usually in, in the United States. Uh, accreditation, uh, and, I don't, and I, I don't profess to know what's involved with that. Is that, uh, is that a long process? Is that one that we're already uh, uh, in the middle of, or is that? Accreditation yeah. is a very long process because you have to demonstrate several, uh, and meet several mm, real stringent requirements. 
uh, which more or less follow the same criteria established by membership in the American Indian Higher Education Consortium. And to, to become accredited, you have to have, uh, you have to demonstrate stable funding. And that stable funding has to occur at well-established uh, uh, time periods, time frames with I would say some well-established uh, uh, basis to provide us uh, with support that will get us to accreditation. We have to have our own facilities, uh, meaning we have to have our own campus with our own building. And within that building, we have to have all of our own teachers. And right now, we rely primarily on about eight adjunct faculty to teach our, our uh, our courses, which are which are, have a very strong bicultural emphasis to them, and so we have to have our own faculty. We have to have other positions, such as a financial aid officer, a bursar, a business manager. So the I, list it goes on and on it's and not, on. It is a long process. It is, and it's not an easy process, but it's one that uh, uh, we're in the that Katz is in the, and is dealing with right now as we speak, I guess. Actually, uh, if you hold that thought for just a few minutes, we're going to come right back and talk about that. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back on Tribal Topics, we will talk more with Dr. Henrietta Mann about the Shine and Rapido Tribal College. Stick around. At the turn of the last century, Native people lived off the land. As times changed, our way of life of growing, gathering, and hunting traditional foods changed. Many of us became less physically active. Our communities had to rely on less healthy processed foods. A serious disease, type 2 diabetes, emerged. Today, Native people are on the move to bring back traditional healthy foods and physical activity to help prevent type 2 diabetes. Be active. Eat healthy, make wise choices. I know we have the power. Our people and cultures hold the answers. We will return to our life in balance. Welcome back to Tribal Topics here on Shine and Arapaho Television. I'm Darren Brown, joined by Dr. Henrietta Mann, the, uh, I was going to say interim president, but that's, let's just call you president, drop the interim, the president of the Shine and Arapaho Tribal that's College. That's who I am. Okay. They, the president. At Swasu, Southwestern yeah. Oklahoma State University. Uh, before the break, we talked about uh, accreditation and that long road ahead. Uh, and what, where the Shine and Arapaho Tribal College needs to get to in order to make the vision work. Uh, speaking of visions, uh, uh, there has to be a grand plan, a grand vision uh, for the Shine and Arapaho Tribal College. I don't know what that is. I'm, why, don't you, why don't you enlighten me? I just, I, I, I can't wait to hear this. I mean, there's, I can, I can only imagine. There's, I mean, I can see it now, but tell me your vision for this thing. The vision. It's that safe place, safe place of learning that really honors our traditions as a people. Um, we need to be accredited. To get to accreditation requires a great deal of money, more money than the tribes are able to give us. But unless we're accredited, we can't get grants. Without getting grants, we rely solely upon the tribes. And so it seems as if I got on a treadmill somewhere and, it, and it's running and there's nothing I can do except to continue to, to go. We have graduated 50 people, about 50 people from the tribal college, uh, primarily in the American Indian Studies, General Studies degree field. So, so we've graduated them. Uh, a lot of our graduates have come to work or work for the tribes among them. 
the individual that sits in the top office for the tribes, the governor's position, is a graduate of uh, the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribal College. Uh, so uh, there are others, others here. And so we have the four degrees. We have graduated 50 students. Our enrollment peaked at 110 a couple of years ago. 110? Uh, yes. But it's declined to around about 50 right now. But are you it's telling me you had one in ten, 110 enrolled at one time? Mm -hmm. Now yes, that is not bad at all. I know. I, I mean, that's. There's a tribal college in either Wisconsin or Michigan that is a tribal college, fully accredited, that has 34 students. But yeah, the fact that, that you have, I mean, uh, that, those are good numbers. Those are good numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and 50 is, is a pretty good number, I think. Yeah, I have graduated 50 with enrollment at 110. Yeah, so, but you know, those that fund us want to say, you know, where, are, where are your facts, your figures, your numbers? Mm -hmm. And uh, we've done a, a very good job. It's just that sometimes I think we have to really look at the Cheyenne Arapaho Tribal College as an investment in the future, in a future that is very important to our sustainability as to allied nations. And so we dream along with the people. We try to help them fulfill their dreams. I have a friend who is a professor of architecture at Iowa State University in Ames. She is on sabbatical this year, otherwise her students would have been here. But for three years, she has made the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribal College the service learning, uh, a part of her service learning course in the spring semester. So for three, three years, and this would have been the fourth, she brings our students down. They look at our dream site. We have a site that we'd love to have. I don't know that we'll ever get it, but there's a more realistic site. Uh, on the periphery of the campus of Swazu uh, that um, we could get with some negotiation and a land lease exchange for some land down around Crowder Lake where Southwestern has some of its facilities, uh, uh, its rope course and its hiking trails and the like. And so I'm still keeping my fingers crossed for that. Uh, if we get a facility, uh, a piece of land, then we got some place where we we could build a building and have our own facilities. And for the time being, our students could be uh, within proximity to Swazu yet and still take their general education courses until we could get up to speed and, and have all of our general education faculty. We would also be able to take advantage of their gym, their library, student union, and so forth. Uh, and so we have plans developed by different groups of students in years one, two, and three uh, from the architecture program at uh, Iowa State University. Beautiful, wonderful dreams that have uh, and uh, designs that have been geared entirely to designing facilities that are appropriate to Cheyenne and Arapaho cultures. I mean, I would love to have any one of them. There is uh, a building, there was a building designed by one of the graduate students in the program and that building, if it were built, would be all but LEED certified. I mean, it would actually meet all the criteria for LEED certification, but we wouldn't have the money probably to pay for getting that kind of certification, but it would be, it would be that first rate environmentally friendly building. And so I want our students to not just have any kind of facility because they deserve the best. So we have, we have been working with Iowa State in, in coming up with some of our ideas. Of course, we'd have to visit with licensed architects and so forth. Uh, but we have done that. We've identified some land. We've got courses. We've got four degree programs. We graduated uh, 50 students. We have 
about 10 or 12 faculty. We offer, we have about maybe 10 faculty. We offer about 12 courses a semester. Most of them taught through distance education facilities after five o'clock so that our tribal em, uh, employees and tribal members can get uh, uh, to take their courses uh, uh, through distance ed after five o'clock. And uh, we have the best of all possible worlds. It's just that I wish we had more students. I wish mm -hmm. we had more dollars. I wish we had more faculty other than the, the uh, I wish we had more people building the tribal college other than three individuals. I, but I think, I think, I mean, at least what's, what's pleasing to me and what I did not know, like I said, the little I know about the Shine and Rapo Tribal College is that I'm glad to know that there is a, a plan. And there is a, so there is like, and I can, and I actually, uh, when you get a chance, I want to see this. I want to see these plans. And I, I, I'm dying to see the land myself. We I, got I find them on digi digital, we got them on, on CDs. I think what people, uh, I think maybe what uh, people need to know is that, uh, so often and when you hear something that's uh, a small venture that starts, you know, people, there are those who may, I don't want to call them naysayers, there's people who might say, well, that won't work, that's not going to last. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I, th I think what people need to know about the Shine and, and the Rapido Tribal College is that there are people like yourself and, and, and uh, Gail who are working to make this dream a reality. And Alden Whiteman is our Vice President for Development. Mm -hmm. Uh, and planning. What, uh, I guess what, for those people who, uh, who may be watching who either don't know much about the Tribal College or have heard of it and may not understand what exactly what it is, uh, what can you tell them, what can you tell them to sell them, sell them into coming to the Shine and Arapahoe Tribal College? I would have to say first of all whether or not we want to understand it or realize it is, is that maybe in my, our parents' time, we said you have to get a good, you have to get a high school diploma. And that was what people mm, set as their, their goals to have a high school diploma to help them uh, uh, be more marketable in terms of the workforce. Now we are hearing that you're going to have to have a college degree, meaning a four-year college degree, to be a good candidate in the workforce come the year 2050. And by that time, individuals are going to have to have college degrees. So just and I don't know that we're doing all that much. I'd like to think that we are, and we're so we'll be helping in that process. Uh, and uh, I just want Cheyenne and Arapaho young people and people to have those skills, to have that knowledge, to be self-sustaining, to be self-supporting, to to be very proud of who they are as Cheyenne and Arapaho people and to be able to maintain that very strong sense of identity as they walk into the future, the workforce of America of tomorrow, of 2050 and beyond. Just like you have said, uh, I think a couple times a day, it's about that investment. Uh, Dr. Mann, thank you so much for being here. We're almost out of time here, uh, but I want to make sure, do you have a phone number they can reach you with the Tribal College? Yes, they can call area code 580-774-3139. And you, got, you, uh, you have a website as well. Uh, we, will, we can pop that up as well. And uh, Oh, they can you guys are on Facebook, too. We are on Facebook. Yeah, you can go to Facebook and search Cheyenne Arapahoe Tribal College. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mann, thank you so much for being here. And uh, uh, this show has been entirely about the Cheyenne Arapahoe Tribal College. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, we will see you next time right here on Tribal College.